Last night during an interview, Georgia Senator and WNBA Atlanta Dream co-owner Kelly Leffler continued her strong stance against the Black Lives Matter movement. She was also asked if she would step down as owner of the Dream. Take a listen. Is there any chance, Senator, I should say, that you are going to step aside as an owner, give up your interest or sell it off? Any chance? Uh, look, Laura, the, what's, at, what's at stake here is, is yes much or no. more than it's a, a team. Is that wiggle room? Come on. I mean, this is uh, the Ingram angle. No. What's it, yes or no? No. No. Shannon, will she continue her ownership stake? Skip, I don't see how. <clears throat> I understand she doesn't want to, but I think there's something in the provision. I think in all organizations, we saw that in basketball, Donald Sterling did not want to give up his. Mm -hmm. But he understood there was enough owners to vote him out. Yep. In the NFL, it's the exact same way. Mm -hmm. If enough owners get out, you're going to need a majority. So if 20, 20, I think it's 20, what, 24, 26 of the owners were to vote. So it's going to, I believe it's the same thing. If enough of these owners says, no, she has to go, she has no choice. Because she entered into a contract where, the, and, and that's what's going to happen. It's hard for them to field a team if nobody wants to play for the dream. Now, so I, I, I don't get, now I get what she's doing here, Skip. She's up for election. Now, she was on a special appointee yeah. by the governor, Brian Kemp, in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. To she, be the senator. To be the senator. Mm -hmm. She, Johnny, uh, Johnny Isaacson, stepped down for health-related reasons. Now, in order for her to get reelected, she's going to have to go before the people. Now, the people are going to have to put, there's nothing else Brian Kemp can do. He's done her a solid by placing her there. She's a diehard, staunch supporter of President Trump. Everything he stands for. But Skip, she mentioned this cancel culture. Guess who started that? One, President Trump. Because you remember in 2017 when he went down to Alabama and he said the player that kneel, that the owner should get fired, get him out. Mm -hmm. He started it. When the media wouldn't give him favorable reports, newspaper, cancel them, they should be done away with. Mm -hmm. Journalists, fired. Fake news. He started the cancel culture. Mm -hmm. Now you see what happened is that black people got a little voice, got a little power. We calling out their bull jive. Oh, they want to cancel. You're exactly right, Ms. Kelly. We want to cancel the system that's been in place for this length of time that keep minorities down, that keep minorities bound. You're exactly right. We want to cancel mm -hmm. that culture. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do everything we possibly can to upend that culture, mm -hmm. tear it down. Mm -hmm. So, Skip, I don't see how. Given what she stands for, given what the NBA, WNBA stands for, mm -hmm. I don't see how she stays in this role. Mm. The truth is, <clears throat> I don't believe she cares whether she stays in this role or not. I think she'd like to fight for it until the election, which yeah. is November 3rd. Right. But after that, I don't think she cares. I think she knew when she sent this letter to the commissioner of the WNBA. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to guess that she or her side, her people leaked this letter to mm -hmm. the media because she wanted it out there. Right. Because as you know and I know, this is a page right out of the playbook of our president. Yeah. And I believe that like our president, she might be a little desperate about whether she can be actually elected mm -hmm. back into the post she was appointed mm -hmm. to. Your state of Georgia appears that it might become, for the first time in almost 30 years, a swing state. Mm -hmm. Will it vote Trump? Will it maybe right. vote Biden? Will it be on the fence? I think maybe Clinton. Okay. It was 92. Clinton. Yeah. Yes, they voted Clinton. Mm -hmm. Your majority voted right. Clinton. So because of that, she's no shoe in to get no. elected into this office. Correct. And she played the, the far right card. Mm -hmm. She went back to her constituency that she believes would vote her into this office, mm -hmm. just the way I believe our president is also reaching back for those people, His base. Ho hoping mm -hmm. they're still there for him. Right. And I'm, I'm gonna remind everyone, she, she grew up on a farm in central Illinois, not in Georgia, outside a little town called Stanford. Mm -hmm. Then she went to the University of Illinois down the bottom of the state, south uh, in Champaign. southern Illinois, Champaign, and then back up to the very top of the state in Chicago to DePaul to get her business uh, uh, master, mm -hmm. master's in business. And then she worked her way up through business and joined a very powerful company. And within a couple of years, she married the CEO of that company. And she is a very huh. wealthy woman. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and inside of trading, but we, we talk about okay, that. They were day. investigated, but it was dropped. But they were investigated. It, it, it was yes. dropped, huh? Mm -hmm. It was dropped. Oh, okay. Okay. But, <laughs> but to your point, correct. They were definitely investigated. Just before the pandemic hit, uh -huh. they were selling a lot of shares and it looked like whatever. 
Okay. So now she has become a, a 50% owner of the Atlanta dream. Mm -hmm. I don't think that in, in the grand scheme of things, that matters very little to her. Very. But it is a great stage for her and a great platform right. by which to campaign. So she chose the moment, and it's, it's some shrewd operating mm -hmm. here, to, to not just double down against Black Lives Matter, to just go all in against Black Lives right. Matter with exaggerations and, and I believe some fabrications <laughs> because her first statement in the letter, <clears throat> if I may repeat some of the things she claimed, uh, she called it uh, Black Lives Matter, a political movement. And, and by the way, just this is my two cents from over on this side of the table. It, it's not a political movement. It, it's a human movement. Right. It's a life movement. Right. It's an equality movement. It, it's, it's not about politics right. per se. It, it's, about, it's about people. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't buy that. But she says that this political movement has advocated for defunding the police, call for the removal of Jesus from churches, not sure about that one. <laughs> and the disruption of the nuclear family structure. I, I don't think Black Lives Matter has anything to do with that. I might be wrong, but right. I'm sorry. I, I don't see that one. That the Black Lives Matter movement has harbored anti-Semitic views. Well, Deshaun stepped into that. Maybe right. that gave her the opening. I don't Correct. know, but, but whatever. And then in her latest salvo yesterday, she did a couple of national TV interviews this organization, Black Lives Matter, seeks to destroy American principles, and I had to draw the line. Destroy American principles. I, I'm lost on that one, but maybe it well, plays well to, to what you call the base. But, but she's but she's not lying mm -hmm. because the American principles is as she sees them: mm -hmm. minorities impoverished, minor, minorities not having the economic mm -hmm. base. You mean but, the way the way things were? Right. Yeah. So okay. she's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. They don't want to upset that, the end of systemic and institutional mm -hmm. racism. So the principles of which America was founded on mm -hmm. is right. She doesn't want that to go away. A lot of people don't want that to go away. That's what President Trump keeps mm -hmm. talking. Our heritage, our heritage, even though, as we talked about in the first segment, Skip, your heritage came at the expense and pain and suffering of someone else's heritage. She doesn't get it. Well, she gets it. Uh, she she, 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 she does. totally gets it. Mm -hmm. She totally gets it. She's, she's, like you said, she's a very educated woman, mm -hmm. and she knows what's at stake here. And so what, and that's what, any, Skip, you remember, I think it was, what, 2014? Maybe 2014 is when the Tea Party rose to prominence mm -hmm. because they, were, they said there's some things that's going on in this administration that we don't like, so we're going to start a movement. Mm -hmm. Well, blacks have said, you know what, we're kind of tired of this. We're tired of this police brutality. We're tired of not be, having the economic base that we see other, uh, 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 another segment enjoy. We're tired of these institutions and, and this, this systemic racism that's held us back for years and years and years. We're tired of it. So we're going to start a movement. Mm. That's normally what happens, Skip. There's an uprising. That's what happened with the Tea Party. We got, Skip, I got tired of this. They said, we're tired of taxation without representation. So you know what they did, Skip? They started an uprising. And they dumped all that tea in the Boston Harbor because that was, that was the money. Mm -hmm. Tea was money then. It was the currency. No, it wasn't. Not dollars and cents. Tea. So that got their right. So the blacks and whites and minorities said, we, we're going to start a movement. And what is happening, Skip, if you notice, the movements are getting bigger. Yep. You look at gay pride and you look at the people that's around the country, how big this movement is. Mm -hmm. You look at the LBGT community and how big this movement is. And you look at Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and you see how movement is. In, and they see, for the very first time I skip in a very long time, I believe they say this paradigm is shifting. Mm -hmm. And we got to do something. We got to hold them. Skip, they're not letting it go. Mm -mm. Power concedes nothing without demand. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to say, you know what? We've been here for a long time, and we've had it this way. We think we want to be fair. We want to do right by you guys. And here you go. Here's mm -hmm. some power. Mm -hmm. And here's some of our economics. And, and, and this, we're going to tell you, no, that's not how it works, Skip. So if you step away from what's happening with Senator Leffler. Yes. It, it's almost laugh out loud, the irony of it. She owns 50% of a women's basketball team in Atlanta, which I consider like a black capital, it is. right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and a huge and a huge and a huge gay population, Skip. Okay. The pride, I mean, the pride down there is unbelievable. Okay. And it, the starting five for the Atlanta Dream is oh 
African American. Oh. The, the top eight scores from last year, either yes. black or minority. And she owns half of that, which just seems wrong to start <laughs> with. But but whatever. She she it's American. You can right. buy your way in. Right. So so there she is. And then the the truly laugh out loud statement from her in the letter to the commissioner was. The truth is we need less politics in sports, not more. This is all about her politics. Yes. And from start, start to finish, finish, it's all about her political position Correct. and her ability to win an election and continue to be. She's gotten a taste of this as an appointee. She's called the junior senator yes. now from Georgia. Mm -hmm. She wants to get elected. Right. She wants a four-year run in Washington, right. D.C. And she's running on the very platform that mm -hmm. President Trump is standing mm -hmm. on. Right. And, and she's doing, she is following the leader. Mm -hmm. This is exactly his M.O. Yes. I, I don't know if she has communication with him. I don't know if I'm he sure encouraged she, this. Yeah, most of, I mean, basically all 50 of them, I mean, mm -hmm. more than that because they have the majority. A lock, stop, and, a lock, step, and bow mm -hmm. with it. Yep. I mean, they pretend, like Susan Collins in Maine, oh, she pretend what he's doing is very troubling and concerning. Oh, yeah, I'm going to vote with him. Mm. Same thing. I, I don't let him fool me, Skip. I, I, see, you can say one thing, but when it comes time to vote, because I be watching C-SPAN, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it was concerning to you, mm -hmm. but you still voted. Mm -hmm. You still confirmed. Okay. <laughs> you watch C-SPAN. I watch <laughs> Okay. That's okay. that's why I win every sports debate on this show. Well, that's right. all I do is watch TV. Uh -huh. All right, guys, it is time <laughs> to switch gears, and we're going to get Shannon's reaction to LeBron only being ranked the 10th best player of all time right when we come back. Really?